This conference will now be recorded. Okay, can you make me presenter again? Right, can you see my screen? We can see like, yeah. And can you hear me my voice clear and loud? Yes. Okay. So did you get the part why our EC2 machine is different from our local machine? What makes that part that, uh, you know, differs a local machine from a web server? Did you get that concept? Sorry, just you know, can you brief us again? You know, sorry about that. Uh, because right. uh, when you are explaining, you know, your voice was a little bit off. Um, that, you know, sorry. All right. So let's consider this. I have a local machine that is MacBook, and in this file, I have index some some index.html files, some CSS, and everything documents I have. The same file I have uploaded to the EC2 machine. The index for page and HTML everything. Now, when I hit this index for HTML page from my own local machine and see on the browser, I can see all the content. I can see all the contents. I can surf all the data. But you sitting on the world on the internet cannot hit to this side. Whereas the same content when I upload it on the index for HTML on my EC2 machine, anyone on the internet can go to that site, can go to that IP address. And see my data. So, what makes this difference? Why you cannot touch to my uh, local machine data and you can touch to EC2 machine? That was my question. Hello? Hello, yeah, that was my question. Yeah. Yeah, uh, your MacBook is not uh, on a public. How, uh, if you want to make me public, then how I can do this public? And what do you mean by public? See, it is not accessible on uh, internet. How I can make on this accessible on the internet? Probably you have to give an uh, uh, elastic or uh, elastic IP. If you want a static. So this is my public IP. Yeah. My machine, my MacBook is connected to a public IP. It has a private IP too. If you want to see? I can show you. It has both but, public and private IP. See, private uh, IP could be a LAN IP, right? So that that cannot be connected. It has to be NATed outside to a public IP. No, no, no. It doesn't matter. Whatever the network interface you have. Your network interface gives you public IP and private IP. I have network card, maybe a Wi-Fi, maybe a LAN card. So this LAN card and Wi-Fi card gives me private IP. And if it is connected to the internet, it gives me pu public IP. So to my Mac machine, I have both public IP and private IP. The reason why I have a public IP, we are having a communication on a internet based view IP tool. Right, you are also connected on internet. I am also connected on internet. And when we are having a communication, it means our both the system have public IP. Okay. Uh, but the files stored in uh, local do local domain. Uh, once again. Uh, the files stored in a, in your local domain, so we cannot access on the public. Okay. So in case if you want to access the data, what I need to do? If you want to access the index for HTML file, what I need to do? Sir, something like we are doing port forwarding uh, from the EC2. No, this is in my Mac machine. So yeah. if I want, if you want to see there's this. No or something. There's no web server or something. Exactly, there is no web server. Yeah. What is the use of Apache server? Apache, Nginx. Um, okay. What is the use of this server? Why we use this server basically? These are the servers is used to host the applications on top exactly. of it. Exactly. So when we have installed the Apache server on EC2, we have actually hosted our application that is index.htm 
index.html page so that it anyone on the internet can visit to our site and see the content but did i did the did i install anything apache engineering something on my mac machine no and that's the reason why my content on my local machine is not accessible on the internet whenever you have an internet card whenever you have a network card on your laptop on your computer or on ec2 machine every ec2 machine or every computer will have a network card that will give you private ip if it is connected to a lan if it is connected to a wifi if it is connected to any devices then it will have a private ip for its internal purpose for its internal communication and that network card if it is connected to the internet it means your system has a public ip2 now when i am talking to you when your my voice are delivered to your system it means some packet from my system is delivered to your system that is there is a transmission of data from one end from source to the destination and this transmission of data from source to destination can be only possible if two machines have public ip all right this is the basic of networking uh, it doesn't uh, it doesn't comes with anything with the aws is not related to mac machine or doesn't related to ec2 machine this is the basic of networking that when two devices when two systems wants to have communication they must have public ip for transmission of the data if they are situated on the internet and if two systems are connected together via private link maybe a lan cable maybe or anything then without internet connection with the private ip address they can have communication all right now coming to the back to the uh, now yeah please uh, if i want to uh, host in a local machine and uh, just to make the access to okay in case like in your own system if you want to host your application what you need to do is you need to install any apache or any other web server so whenever you install the server it will open to the port 127.0.0.0 that is a local host is called as local host so to your local host whatever your ip will be if you hit from the browser you will find your content if you have done this job and if you want me to connect to your if you want me to see your content if you want me to see your application which is residing on your laptop i can see that i just need to post i just need to pass your public ip slash 84 and whatever the local machine will be it will be hit to the browser and i can see your content all right now uh, coming yeah still i have a question like uh, if i want to access this local uh, uh, html page i think you just told like i can use any of the servers right apache uh, nginx or tomcat right uh, and also uh, is it uh, is the uh, local is that local ip is dynamic something like once the network is goes off again it will connect okay of uh, course is it, of is course IP changes yes 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 your ip changes whenever you change the network whenever you restart your machine your ip will change the public ip this public ip will automatically change this is a dynamic ip so at that time you need to make sure that whatever the ip that you have associated is currently the same ip of your system okay you cannot stick to that uh, the same ip address even if uh, want to restart the internet right no, no you cannot risk you cannot stick to it on your local machine but you can stick to aws ec2 machine if you have ec2 machine which has a dynamic ip you can make a strategy that is possible okay okay now coming back to the our task that is i want to create a linux machine and i want to make sure that whenever it is configured it must have the efs system mounted and it should have all the data so how i can do this and what are the things that i will require to do if i want to go with the bootstrapping
Yes, guys. I'm waiting. How I can achieve this task? Okay, let's just distribute our task into small tasks. All right. So you have an EC2 machine, and in EC2 machine, you have already configured a EFS system. Correct? Yeah, we we have one EC2 machine running in our system, and in this machine, we have already configured an EFS system. Where we have mounted EFS system? Yes, guys. Where we have mounted this EFS system? They mounted on EC2, right? Yeah, uh, inside this EC2, on which directory we have mounted? That uh, uh, Apache server directory. Right. So when we are creating a new server, do we have that directory pre-installed? No. No. So how can how can I achieve that? Bootstrapping. Okay. Yeah, right. Exactly. The bootstrapping. What commands we need to pass? This is my bootstrap. I start my bootstrapping here. So what commands yeah. I need to start? You have to install the Apache and uh, start Apache service. Exactly. So I pass this command. I'm install httpd hyphen y. It will automatically install the directory via wwwsg one and then I will start. start. Then I will make sure that every time it is uh, you know restarted, it will automatically start the server. And then now what? Now once again, just try to understand this concept. Let's just forget I want to mount this directory to where www.html. Now my condition is changed. Now I want to uh, want to mount this directory to where only. And where folder is by default available in your EC2 machine. Now in that case, what I need to do? Mounting. mounting mounting directly mounting to the where folder we need to give mount device name yeah this commands right sudo mount efs to this until where command yes guys please now my condition is changed. I don't want to mount to the where www.html directory. I just want to mount the directory to where folder. And where folder is by default available in your EC2 machine. So in that case, do I require to install all these things? No. No? No. All right. So. I'll just remove this part. What we need to do is directly mount this EFS to this where. Will it work? But we can't do this. All right, so let's just hello. Yeah, you can mount it right directly because the wire is already there. Yeah, where is already there? I can mount this directory to all this file. 
So all my index.html and every content will be available in this directory. Correct. Now my yes. question is, can I see this content on the browser? No. Why? Because Apache is not Apache is not installed. Exactly. So we need to always make sure that Apache is available, whether your mount point is different or the same. Right. Now next command will be. Uh, we need to install this part, and we need to mount this directory. So I will copy this command directly here and paste it here. Oh my God. All right, this is what our uh, script will look like. And to the best I know, if I pass this command to the bootstrapping, it will automatically do everything, correct? Let's try. I launch a server in my ES US East 1B. I will select this time 1B and in the advanced setting, I will pass the entire script. All right. Next, add storage, add tags, keep everything default. Give a name, server two, configure security, and uh, we'll select. Now, which security group do I need to select? Linux. Linux. Only Linux, or do you require to have any more? No, no, no. Uh, default DPC. Yeah, I need to select both because this default is uh, connected to my EFS system. So I need to have both. Review and launch. Now let's just wait and to our public IP, whenever we hit to the size, we must be able to get the content. Let's just wait for a few seconds to make sure it has downloaded the Apache server and mounted the directory. So Apache has been successfully installed now. Yes. Now we are waiting for the, and you can see here, the mount is also successful. If I start my server again, service. Just a minute. If I start my first server again, and if I pass a command sudo so service http start again, then both this IP will be able to communicate on the browser and it will show you the same content that we have. Now, where is this content is stored on our EFS system? That is installed on the EFS system. Very nice. So our data is on the EFS system. We have written a script that will automatically download the content of this EFS system and it will download the Apache server, it will mount everything, and it will make sure that within only a few seconds our website is run up and running. All right. Uh, How many? Really? Yes. Uh 
for example, uh, other than this HTML files, if I stored some files in the EFS, okay, uh, if I if I uh, uh, directly uh, get the link of the file so that I can just view through the uh, EFS, right? Right, right. Uh, of course, we can put any date, any doc, any uh, data on this EFS system. Okay, and the same thing. For example, even if I want to check uh, what this HTML page uh, is in the EFS, I can just click on that HTML page. I can view that page, right? HTML page, the EFS. Right. No, no. On the EFS, you cannot just go uh, and check with what uh, content you have. You need to log into one of the EC2 instance, and you can just visit to the site, uh, HTML, whatever your directory is, and then you can see the data. Like whatever the op file that you want to open, you can have a look on this file. If you want to open this index.html file, you can open this file here. Okay. Now, once again, I have a small doubt. What if I change the index.html file here? How is it going to affect? Like, let's say. Uh, the content here is find your next product or business partner here. I change this part and do any uh, any other sentence here. So how and where is going to take action? It is, uh, it is uh, naturally on the EFS store So basically, now try to understand. This data is on on on. Is this data is present on EFS system? Yes. We are seeing this data on our EC2 instance because we have mounted the directory. Now, whatever the changes that you do here, this data will be replicated and this data will be updated on your EFS system actually. And this will affect to all the EC2 machines connected to that EFS system. If you have hundreds of EC2 instances which is connected to this EFS system, the data will be all synchronized and the data will be replicated to all the different EC2 instances and you will find the same content. Any changes you do on a single machine, that will affect to all the EC2 machines. So because this is a network based of file system, this is a common directory to the data. All right. Okay. Now this seems very easy. The part that we have seen so far from the morning, EC2, EPS, EFS, all the troubleshooting and the networking part, this becomes very easy. But you need to do a lot of practice here. Trust me, you need to do a lot of practice. Okay. Right. Now, as we know that this is a public IP, right? This public IP changes whenever you restart any EC2 instance, this public IP will automatically change. Now, AWS gives you one feature through which you can make a dynamic IP public, dynamic IP static. That is called as elastic IP. From the left, when if you just scroll a little bit more, you'll find an elastic IP section. Now, what is elastic IP? To all your network interface, on specifically on AWS, I'm saying you will have one public IP, you will have one private IP, and you will have an elastic IP. There are three types of IPs available. Now, elastic IP is completely optional. If you want, you can take it. If you don't want, you can leave it. This is completely optional. And so do public IP. Public IP is also similarly, if you want it, you can keep it. If you do not want, you can just ignore this public IP. Even if you do not have any public IP, then also an application can be hosted on the browser and can be seen on the browser. But every EC2 machine must have a private IP and you do not have any option to configure this part. This is a pre-installed, pre-configured thing that comes with all the EC2 machine. Every EC2 machine will have a private IP. Now, a single private IP can talk to another I private IP. Reason is because they both are in the same region, they both are in the same VPC, they both are in same network. That's why two systems can have communication over instance private IP. 
they do not require instance public ip mark this sentence this is very important for my exam two instances having a private ip can communicate with each other if the firewall is allowed then this communication can be done without any permission but two public ip cannot have a permission with uh, sorry this two a private ip can have a communication between two ec2 instances without having a public ip it doesn't matter do you have a public ip or not they can have communication and that's what we will see in our vpc section how to design an infrastructure without public ip because as per the best practices whenever you design an architecture for the customers you will not require a public ip you will not expose your servers to the browser right now if you got this public ip that is the one that i have if you got the public ip you can hit to the browser and get the data let's say my i am running a e-commerce site amazon.com all right and somehow you got the public ip of my server so you will not hit to amazon.com you can just copy the public ip and hit to the browser and you will get the content from the amazon.com correct that is the way that you can do but how to restrict this part because this is a not a good practice this is a bypass <clears throat> So that's why we will design our architecture with only private IP. We will not include our public IP in our system. So how we can ignore this? How we can take a part of this private IP? What are the benefits when you have a private IP, not the public IP? We'll see in detail. Public IP is something that is first of all dynamic, that can be recognizable from the internet Anyone who is on the internet, any IP on the internet can be talked to another machine. Well, the private, this is a static and no internet connection. Private IP address doesn't have any communication with the internet. If your computer has a private IP, you cannot connect to the internet. You cannot have uh, go to the google.com, you cannot have to anything. Where the static is, elastic IP is a first of all static and it is based on the internet. So instead of having dynamic IP, you can stick to the static IP. So can you give me one example where we can use this elastic IP instead of having a public IP? Yes, anyone? Basically, when you have a production uh, applications or web servers or anything, okay so that particular place uh, where uh, you, uh, people are uh, don't want to change the public ip or anything you can use this domain hosting uh, absolutely correct the concept is very simple and very uh, good that is for the production infrastructure when you are running a web application on your server at that time you configure a domain and this domain is connected to a single IP. But if this IP changes, then domain cannot hit to this IP, which means your server is down. The server is not recognizable on the internet. True? Yes, yes. IP changes. So in this part, we can make this IP as a static so that it doesn't matter how many times the server restarts, your IP still remains the same, which is always associated to your domain. So in this particular case, you can use a static IP or called as elastic IP. But as you, one of you mentioned that for the production infrastructure, this is not at all recommended. If your site is running, let's say amazon.com site you are running, so for, for Amazon site, there are millions of users. So for these millions of users, you will have hundreds of servers, hundreds of thousands of servers, correct? At that time, having an elastic IP is not a good solution. At that time, having a public IP is also not a good solution. At that time, all the infrastructure needs to be maintained on the instance private IP. Whatever the communication you want to do needs to happen on the instance private IP, not the public IP. This is very important. This is the AWS well architecture framework based on best practices. 
whenever you are designing infrastructure for your client you should not give the public access or you should not give the prior public ip to your uh -huh. infrastructure you must always have a private ips only so how you can connect to this private ip how you can configure this that will see in there now the condition with the elastic ip is when you have elastic ip in your system aws doesn't give you any free elastic ip okay in your free tier also you are not eligible to take any elastic ip it is highly chargeable now elastic ip ch charges are dependent on two factors one that is if your elastic ip you have created and it is associated to running instance then you will get minimal charge for that the charges will be there but it's very minimal but here you will get a huge charge if you have requested for elastic ip but not associated with any running machine then the charges will be very huge so this is very important to remember whenever you are creating elastic ip you need to make sure that elastic ip is associated to a running instance if it is not then you will get charge absolutely very high now the another condition with this is in a particular region in your aws account you can have only max 5 elastic ip max only 5 elastic ip is allowed if you want to have more then you need to raise the support tickets and then you will get which again will cost you a lot which is not at all recommended and that's why we say that you should not have elastic ip in your infrastructure you should always design your infrastructure with a private ip only when your application is on your single server that needs to be communicable on the internet at that particular time only you must have a static ip just like our domain scenario you have one web server that one ser web server is coming uh, is connected to one of the domain only you have one single server and one domain for this communication yes you can add elastic ip so how to do this you go to the elastic ip section allocate a new address and you select amazon pool of course you do not allow you do not have any your own private ip allocate so this particular elastic ip is get allocated to you 324 184 51 you click on action and then click on associate address where you want to get associated to the server web server or the server 2 let's click on server 2 and then you click on associate now if you go to your instances and see the server 2 the server ip is now changed to the elastic ip yeah you can see this is in blue mark with the underline and also in the elastic ip section you will find the elastic ip is now changed and this is a static IP that will never release it automatically. Unless you release this elastic IP, it will not automatically release the IP address. All right. Any doubt, any question in this part, elastic IP? Everyone no. is good? Yeah. All right. So now we have two EC2 machine, correct? One in US East 1A and second in US East 1B. But both are throwing the same concept. Both are throwing the same data. And that's the purpose of our production server. When we are having the multiple servers in our infrastructure, a huge server like Amazon.com, Flipkart.com, a huge infrastructure. At that time, we will require multiple servers to handle the load. So we must have the same data, right? Now we have two IPs here. One is both are public IP. These are two IPs. And these two IPs require needs to be communicable on the internet. So can you configure these two IPs to a single domain? Let's say this site is Amazon.com site and this site is running on two servers. So can you combine these two IPs to connect to an Amazon.com domain? Is it possible, guys? Okay. This is, no. 
You cannot do that. And when you have hundreds of server, 50, 60, hundreds of server, at that time it becomes more difficult to manage all the load. So in that case, what we have is elastic load balancer. All right. Shall we start our load balancer section? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So elastic load balancer automatically distributes incoming application traffic across multiple targets such as Amazon EC2 instance, containers, and Elastic IP. So you can distribute your loading, you can distribute your load on your EC2 instances or the containers or the private IPs to the lambdas, to a lot of services. So how you do? Basically, when you're sitting, a user sitting on the internet, he will try to hit to a particular domain. Let's say you are trying to hit to apple.com. Whenever you hit to apple.com, this apple.com is configured to one of the ELB endpoint. Every load balancer will have an endpoint. So your request will go to the apple.com. Apple.com will, uh, you know, forward that uh, and forward that uh, request to the ELB endpoint. So you your request comes to the ELB endpoint, and this ELB endpoint will distribute the traffic to multiple EC2 instances, which is running behind it. If three EC2 instances you have configured for a single load balancer, then this load balancer will distribute the traffic to all the EC2 machines one by one. Now, from exam point of view, this is very important that Elastic Load Balancer distribute the load across all the EC2 instances using round robin technique round robin technique what is round robin technique it will distribute the traffic one by one to each of them so let's say if 10 requests are coming and if you have three servers then the first request will be served to the first history machine second will be distributed to the second third will be given to the third again the fourth will be given to the first fifth to the second sixth to the third seven to the one eight to the second and nine to the third again 10 to the one so in the sequence wise this load will be distributed across all the elastic all the ec2 machine equally it uses round robin technique to distribute the load you have incoming connection what is the number of ec2 instances you have it will distribute the load if you have multiple requests what is the number of servers you have it will distribute the servers based on the number of EC2 instances you are running behind it. Now this is generally a thread architecture of your AWS infrastructure. All right, let's understand this. This big uh, rectangle is basically your VPC, your network of AWS. And inside of this, this is called public subnet, private subnet. Basically, this is nothing but a LD zone. Let's just keep this part aside. When a request is coming to the internet, to your domain, this is your domain, whatever the abc.com, xyz.com you have, this is your domain. So when requests are coming to the domain, it is first transformed to the your load balancer. The request has been forwarded to the load balancer. Now the number of EC2 instances that you have configured in multiple ability zone, maybe in US East 1A and 1B, you have multiple servers running, then you can distribute the load between all the servers. Now maybe here four servers are running and here three servers are running. So this load balancer will distribute the traffic to all the seven servers equally. All right, so let's say this is your front end server, this is your back end server, and this is your database. So your front end, whatever the interaction it does, if you want to have interaction with the private backend server, then this request will be again forwarded to another load balancer. Out of this seven EC2 machine, this request will be made to the load balancer again, which will again distribute the traffic to another load EC2 machine, which is running for the backend server. This backend server will work something and then it will write a data to the database. So let's say you are running an Amazon e-commerce site. All right, whatever the data that you see on the front end, 
let's see that front end is situated on this public servers on this front end servers and whenever you buy anything for creation of the order id for creation of uh, billing for payment gateways and everything this request is getting sent to the backend server all these things are maintained by the backend server so whatever the, if one let's say there is a sale there is a millions of user which is interacting to your amazon.com site out of this 1 million user let's say 50 lakhs users are creating an order so this 50 lakhs request will be sent to this load balancer and this 50 lakhs request will be distributed across multiple servers running behind it now the job of this server is to create an order id to do the payment gateway and everything etc and whatever the order id is created collect all the data and write the data to the database so now the main aim to understand this diagram is to understand what is this load balancer and what is this load balancer this load balancer we have configured to get a request from the internet correct when a request is coming from the internet this request will be hit first with the load balancer so this is something we call as internet facing load balancer or also called as external load balancer we expose this load balancer to the internet so that any requests that are coming should be accessible to reach to this destination and as this server this request to this load balancer are coming from the internal architecture because whatever the requests are coming to this load balancer is coming from the internal ec2 instance within the same vpc so this is considered as internal load balancer this is called as internet facing load balancer this is called as internet facing sorry this is called as internal load balancer and this is called as internet facing load balancer all right guys are you comfortable with this internet and internal facing load balancer did you understand this architecture yeah i have one doubt here okay is there always only one uh, internet uh, load balancer will be there always only one will be there no no okay. it depends on your scenario to scenario what kind of architecture you are designing what kind of scenario you have if again you will require one more load balancer which will should be you no know, exposed to the internet then you can have it. This is just one of the because how do you like this is all logical, right? Yeah, this is all logic. Logical, right? It is not so. So, is there any limitation on the uh, load balancer? Like, uh, can mm, someone only really. is a certain limitation of IPs or anything to resolve? There is no limitation. A load balancer can handle millions of requests. Yeah, how they will map to the domain name? Multiple is there. So in the inside the robot load balancer. No, no, first facing always will be only one because no domain name. So what will happen is from the public domain. Let me know, guys, your questions. Public domain, the load balancer. All DNS resolving. Uh, can you just you know uh, just you know, give the, you know, the not the scenario like uh, just to explain the, the architecture you know what you are presenting the, the front gate is it app gateway what you are referring there the incoming application traffic is getting through the gateway yes yes so uh, ideally speaking if you are working on any of the application which is exposed uh, exposed to the internet then this app gateway IP will be mapped to the domain Correct. Then, uh, once you receive all the incoming traffic inside the app gateway, then it will be still, you know, send that request back to the ELB. Then ELB will manage the internal uh, load balance on these EC2 instances. Right. Okay. Basically, what is the connection you are getting on your domain? Possibly. That request will be load balancer. Yeah. The question is on the architecture now because you know what if, if this app API goes down, you know, even though you have a good load balancing inside the architecture, in the entire you know, the bottleneck uh, running through the gateway, what happens? Do you have even uh, you know, uh, the HA for architecture also? For architecture also? No, we, we don't require that. 
what if if we you know app gateway get choked sir this is all logic see the concept here is to understand is the internal and the external load balancer the way that we secure our architecture is via internet exposing to the internet and via not exposing to the internet how you can control this is your load balancer is sending the traffic to your ec2 machine on the instance private ip do not focus currently on this architecture okay do not focus just try to understand the load balancer part whenever the request is coming it gets hit to your domain the domain is configured to forward the traffic to your load balancer so this means whatever the user will hit to the request it will get the content on the browser so we are exposing this load balancer to the internet so that whatever the requests are coming you should handle it now logically this load balancer will contact to this ec2 machine to fetch the data the index.html files and all the contents so this communication from a load balancer to an ec2 machine will be done on the ec2 machine private ip this commission doesn't require any public ip this communication will happen on the instance private ip so again it doesn't matter that ec2 machine has a public ip or not without public ip you can still have a data transmission so let's say there is a one user who is trying to hit to your domain so domain get data from the load balancer load balancer will fetch the data from the ec2 machine the data is then packed sent to the load balancer and wire to the browser all right this communication is, is done again this data is transferring uh, the interaction is doing with the backend server doing any payment gateway again the request will be sent here and the data will be managed here this private subnet will do the, all the transaction and again the data will be returned and the process will be terminated now this internal load balancer doesn't require any internet connection because the request that are coming to this load balancer is coming from the ec2 instance instance architecture that is from the internal vpc the request is coming so this we cannot we should not expose to the internet and again this communication from this load balancer to the ec2 machine is again instance private ip not the public ip so you can make all the ec2 instances to have only private ip not the public ip and still you will be able to design the entire architecture how would subnets you mentioned here uh, the public subnet and private subnets yeah so what about this public subnet and private subnet yeah just just can you just brief us on that as well like you know what is the role of subnets here and why uh, the so, public all right the so public subnet and private subnet is something that defines whether your ec2 instance have internet connection or not so when you have a public subnet it means the ec2 instance residing in this machine the ec2 machine that you have created in this subnet have internet connection on that ec2 machine whereas on the private subnet you do not have any internet connection so all the ec2 instances created under this subnet will not have any internet connection that is a difference also here also you can make the public subnet the front end should be can be also private subnet the back end should can be also private subnet and still your server will work yeah so as per this design only the eap is which is exposed to the public and even uh, if the first one you know instead of public it can be private as well you know it should it should work no? yes it can be private also it doesn't matter because the instance private ip and the elb will work together to distribute the data so it doesn't matter that whether you have ec2 instance having an internet connection or not whether it has a public ip or not still this communication will work and this is the one of the most secure way of transferring the data to the internet all right is it mandated that you know for each machine or each instance we should have a subnet like you know <coughs> no 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 not each machine should have a internet basically this is called as high availability one of the futures of aws cloud computing is high availability what is high availability is you design your architecture in multiple availability zone so there is a one subnet in let's say us east one and there is a one another subnet 
let's call in us east 1b so you have one ec2 instance in us east 1 and one ec2 machine in es east 1a so you are distributing this load in between two average zone all right now in case what happens if this if any one of this already goes down that is one of the data centers goes down then it will make sure that another ability zone will help you to serve the request all the load then will be sent to the another ec2 machine and all the content will be delivered to the user so that is the best practices that high ability it means okay all right when I select the load balancer option, so this high availability is also a built-in feature, or it is an option again uh, additional uh, selection I need to do. Yeah, whenever you have it, it's a uh, default. Whenever you have a load balancer, basically you need to select a load balancer in two different ability zones. So whenever you have a load balancer, it means you have a higher ability by okay. default. Now with this load balancer, what are the features of this load balancer is? It increases the fault tolerance. Like we have discussed this. If one of the ability goes down, then another ability EC2 machine will help you to serve the request. So it increases the fault tolerance capacity. Now it acts as a single point of contact. Here you can see if at the front end side, if you have seven server running, then seven server will have seven different IP address. Maybe it's a public, maybe it's a private. There are different kinds of and uh, you know endpoints available. But now load balancer will act as a single point of contact. The request will not be distributed to all the different five IP. Your domain does not need to configure with all the seven different IP. If your domain needs to just configure with a single ELB endpoint, this endpoint will distribute the traffic across all the seven machines. It performs health check. That is whether your EC2 machine is healthy or not, it checks. If the EC2 machine is healthy, then only it will distribute the traffic. If the EC2 machine is not healthy, it will not distribute the traffic to that particular machine. It can be an ex internal or external. Just now we have seen the internet facing and the internal facing. The communication between ELB instance works on the instance private IP and the not the public IP. Now ELB has its own security group. It contains a listener. Listener checks whether the port is allowed or not. That is, you are opening the port 80, 443, 22 port. What ports you are opening? That is called as listener. Now, you can have all types of listeners all TCP, SSL, HTTP, HTTPS, communications can be done. Now, there are three types of load balancer available. The third one that is a classic load balancer, which is called as the previous generation load balancer. That supports all kind of interaction, HTTP, HTTPS, and TCP. Anything you can communicate with this kind of load balancer. This is a previous generation load balancer, which means like when AWS was come into the picture from that time is still here. Now, when you compare the price and the performance, this classic load balancer lacks in front of application and the network load balancer. These are more high uh, this application load balancer and the network load balancer will give you high performance comparatively to the classic load balancer and that's why it's called as previous generation load balancer now coming to the application side application load balancer only support http and https requests no other tcp port is allowed only 40 sorry 80 and 443 port is only allowed Whereas a network load balancer, all TCP workload is allowed. All TCP ports from 0 to 65,000 IP uh, port, you can enter any port that you want. The another difference is application load balancer checks the health of your application, whether it's running or not. That is, you specify your file name, whether that index.html file is, uh, you know, running on the browser on the port 80 is working fine or not. It checks whether exactly your application is running or not. You configure your file name, index.html, welcome.html, whatever it is, test.html, you configure that file and it checks whether the file is healthy or not. Whereas in the network load balancer, you do not have such option. It will only check whether the network is up and running or not. 
if a system is running if a ec2 instance at that specific port is running then it will distribute the traffic now another difference between application network and the classic load balancer is application and network load balancer both can have both can distribute millions of requests per second they support millions of request transactions per second this classic load balancer doesn't have the capability to distribute the load with this uh, with this performance so this is highly recommended that you should go with the application load balancer or the network load balancer now how to perform the health check there are certain terms that you need to understand to do the health checks here that is first is the protocol which protocol you are using ad port http port tcp port wherever it is response timeout like if you are not receiving any uh, data from the server that is you are trying to reach the server but if you are not getting the server then what should be the response time or seconds ping port the exact port of that uh, you know uh, the application whether you are running the port at port 80 443 exactly what port you are running that port you need to specify health check interval that is after n number of seconds how many checks you want to do let's say you have just done a health check which is got passed so after how much time you need to do another check that is the interval between two health checks then for the application load balancer you have a ping path you specify a path index.html welcome.html via www.html slash index.html whatever it is you specify the path and it checks a particular file then we have healthy threshold that is how many consecutive healthy threshold should be considered as the healthy one for example i have just done a health check and the ec2 machine passed to perform the health check then i will wait for a particular interval and again i will check for the healthy whether the ec2 instance is healthy or not so how many consecutive healthy record should be considered as the healthy threshold so that your instances must be targeted as healthy similarly with unhealthy threshold that is the number of consecutive unhealthy passes will be considered as unhealthy threshold these are the certain health check terms all right any doubt in this part health load balancer uh, lalit i have a question yeah okay. can you please go to the previous slides yes previous slide yeah, uh, see, when it comes to this, uh, when you're working on this some uh, web application kind of thing, and uh, this web application is interconnected with the network, right? Network, uh, networking. Right. How, how, how we can decide uh, in terms of the load? Uh, uh, why? Because the requests are coming and uh, uh, the, the uh, which is connecting to the uh, the web applications, and uh, uh, how to identify where the uh, load balancer is required in terms of uh, 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 assigning the loads to the different services uh, that may be a, from web application or network load balancer how we can just decide to give the more load balancing services to either of the service like application and a network okay so to understand this the basic is application load balancer can only support the requests that are coming from port 80 or 443 so if the requests are coming from the internet that you are distributing some data on the browser just like the website e-commerce site or anything that you show on the browser if this is kind of request then you can go with the application load balancer for all the other network based load balancer like you have a mobile application and which is connected on a particular server right a mobile application which is connected on a particular server on the cloud this communication doesn't require an http or https connection this will have its own internal architecture this will have its own internal communication so for such kind of things you can go with the network load balancer like a gaming site a gaming site cannot uh, like uh, if you say gps and address these are the heavy pubg this application doesn't uh, work on port 80 or 443 for having this communication there is a separate uh, port available maybe 39 49 whatever the port uh, that you customize this communication will work on this particular port so 
having this kind of communication at that time you can go with the network based load balancer because it supports all the tcp kind of interactions all right now it depends on your scenario to scenario you can distribute this network via this application load balancer or network load balancer okay okay yeah thank you So in our lab, we have two EC2 machine, one in e US East 1A and second in US East 1B, and both are targeted with a common data. So from the left hand side, if you just scroll a little bit more, you will find a load balancer. So hit on that load balancer. And I click on create a load balancer. I'll go with the application load balancer. You can try a network and the classic load balancer. Concept is same, the part is same. So I click on here and I give a name. Now, what scheme do you want? Do you want this to be an internal facing or do you want to be an internet facing? Whatever it is, you can select. I will go with the internet facing because of our, we are running a website on port 80. So we will go with the Internet facing load balancer. Now, LD zones. For an application load balancer, you need to choose at least two LD zones. That is here you can see. For an application load balancer, you must have at least two LD zones. Different. But for a network load balancer, you can have only single LED load balancer. That is also acceptable. So we have LED zone in US East 1A and 1B. That is our two machines are created in 1A and 1B. So we'll choose the same. And then click on configure security settings. And here we need to choose a subnet or we need to choose a security group that will allow to have an application listeners. Let's just create ELB security group. All right. And we'll just open a port 80 to the world. Configure routing. And here we create our target group. This target group is nothing but we configure all the EC2 machines here. Let's just give a name. Target group as ELB demo. Our target will be the instances. And if you want to specify, then you can specify the path. In our case, let's do it on index.html because we have an industrial HTML in our site so we can provide the site here now how many healthy threshold should be considered as the healthy one let's just go with a small configuration so that we will get a data fast after a five second every time it will check whether the server is running or not next suggest your targets and here we have two ec2 instances running web server and server 2 so we'll configure both the things and click on add to register. Click on next review and then we finally do create. Now in this way, we have created one application load balancer. And this is the endpoint of this application load balancer. This is the endpoint. This endpoint you can configure with your domain and whatever the requests are coming will be distributed on this DNS endpoint. Now, if you I copy this endpoint and try to hit from the browser, I will not get a data because till the status is in provisionary. So if you want to check, you can click on the target group here from the left hand side. The target that you have just created. If you click on the target section, it says the status is still initial. That is the number of EC2 instances that you have connected is still configuring. So we need to wait until the status becomes healthy.
okay now you can see the status is healthy so if i hit the dns endpoint we are getting the data now as our data is common to both the ec2 machines that's why we are not getting any difference in this data we cannot identify whether the request is sending to the ec2 instance one or the ec2 instance two but the request is sending to both the ec2 machines now i have one elb endpoint through which i can respond to my data whether the ec2 machine is running or not and if i copy the public ip if i hit from the browser i can see the data second still uh, if i copy the ip and hit from the browser i can still uh, visit the same data so what is the use of then having the elastic load balancer a user can hit from the elb endpoint all right so i have configured one domain let's say abcd.com this abcd.com is configured to my app app See, number when i go through public when i go through public you are hitting to only one uh, ecs server ec2 server but when right. i go to when i go to a load balancer evenly to round robin the request will be placed you will utilize for both the instances right but as a user on the internet do you care about this when you hit to amazon.com when you hit to apple.com do you care about this to which server you are uh, hitting no it's so, back end yeah it's, it's okay it's back end so how is it going to affect you if you hit to abcd.com you will see this endpoint you will uh, get the data even if you copy the public ip if you hit from the browser then also you will get the same data so what benefit do you have and if multiple people let's say out of this 1 million user is trying to access to the via this domain and there are uh, one lakh people who is trying to access from a particular when i, IP. When I so, use public maybe so only, one, only one instance is getting load so probably you will feel the performance issue exactly at that time when all the people are hitting to a particular server then you will find a very low performance and the load will be very high on that particular server it may go down so if you have an instant server fails then you will have a downtime which was is having the public ip right so how can you restrict this part that if a request is coming only to my load balancer then only request should be made Otherwise, no request should be made when a request is coming from the instance so private no, IP. No elastic IP. No elastic IP has to be given to any instance. Only uh, allow private IP. Only keep private IP. Okay. So you mean to say I need to remove this public IP, and then there is no thing that uh, you know you can configure. Yeah. That's good. Okay. I can go with that. but if i don't have public ip how i will configure my ec2 server <coughs> let's say i want to make some configuration in my server without public ip how can i do that i cannot connect via instance private ip you have a putty tool you have a terminal if you want to connect to this machine then you will require a public ip not the private ip Can we can restrict on this public IP port AD or something. Sorry, uh, sorry, design get you once again. No, uh, so what is the question? What is asking? Uh, the question is, when you are connecting to the EC2 machine via putty or via terminal, then you will require a public IP. you cannot connect via instance private ip you need to have public ip so there is no way that i can i can remove this public ip i must have public ip for my machine 
then in that case how i can restrict a user to go on a hit from the domain not directly from the ip can we provide uh, access only uh, this public ip maybe we can restrict to uh, all and uh, assign only to then we will open only port number 80 and port 43 Exactly, the ports are already open. Okay. See, this if I go to the server, one of the server, if I check the inbound rules, this AD port is already open. Okay. And if I specifically go to the load balancer, and if I check the security group here, then still the AD port is open. So how can I restrict someone to have access only from the load balancer, not from the server? You can see. What is it? Only HTTP users can access the others. No, no, the no. Role, the reason role. I just is... want to block everyone who is coming back to my eye. I want to block everyone who is coming directly hitting to my instance. Between two systems. Sorry, pardon. We'll create a role. And how will role going to uh, help us? <clears throat> Basically, without role, also we are having communication between EC2 and ELB. We want to block all the all the members, no? Then we will block the uh, port range on uh, port only. Eighty. Uh, as I we no, no, enabled it should come from only load balancer is coming. So load balancer and this EC2 machines. All right. So have a look how you can secure this platform. To our EC2 machine. How a request is coming to the EC2 machine because we have opened this port 80. That's why uh, we are getting the request. What if I do this request? What if I stop this request that nobody can have access on port 80? Because you know we are already exposing this internet facing to the internet. So why we require an 80 port on this port? Why will require 80 port to be open to the world? I can block this, and once I block this part, everything is fine. Okay. Correct. Yes. So how to do that? You can go to the Linux security group, the one that is associated to your EC2 instance, and in that case, you can configure that if a request is coming on port 80. If a request is coming on port 80 from another security group called as App Security Group, sorry ELB Security Group. If a request is coming from ELB, then only you should allow. So we are doing nested security group. We are nesting one security group to another security group. Now what will happen to this EC2 machine if a request is coming on port 80 from this security group that is from Elastic load balancer, then only it will allow to all the requests coming from the browser, from the user's IP will be blocked. Click on save. Now, when I hit from the application load balancer, I'm still getting the data. But when I hit from the IP 330A84 230, it's not connecting. Similar to my second EC2 machine, if I am trying, we are not getting any data. It will wait, it will wait, but you will not find any data inside this machine. But again, if I hit from the application load balancer, I am still getting the data. So 
so now is it working is it helping yes yes this is the way that you can secure your infrastructure by just allowing who can access to the resources and who cannot when we have specified if the request is coming from the application load balancer only that request needs to be accepted apart from that whatever the requests are coming on port 80 should be denied <coughs> now this endpoint you can configure to whatever the domain you have and you can run your site all right Alec, uh, one small question yes uh, can we use uh, this load balancer if i'm using an hybrid platform yes of course you can use okay so yeah. i can put the uh, uh, make the on prem uh, app server to be uh, no 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 if you are having a servers on on premises then you cannot use this load balancer on the aws it will cost okay. you a lot Trust me, it will cost you a lot. What you can do is you can download one server, you can create a server and download HA proxy. Basically, uh, AWS also is also using HA proxy only. You can download the software on your one of the server and then you can configure all other servers to this machine. And then you can expose this endpoint, HA proxy server endpoint to the your domain so whenever request is coming the request will come to the proxy server which will then distribute to all the servers running behind it just like this when an internet user is getting a request all the requests will come to the ha proxy and ha proxy will distribute the servers uh, the request to all the multiple servers just this like our source, this is the open source Okay. Any question? Any doubt in this part? Mm. Looks good. Uh, yeah, but you need to practice a lot about this, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We see that. Mm. It seems very easy, but when you try to do, uh, you will find a lot of things, and that is the best case. Like in exam, you will have ten percent of questions on troubleshooting. So the more you do lab session, it will help you to troubleshoot the things and that will help you to understand the different scenarios in the exam. Yeah, All right. So it's uh, four o'clock. Let's just take a 15 minutes break and then we'll connect back and we'll see the rest of the section that is auto scaling. Okay. All right then, see you in 15 minutes.
हेलो 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 गाइस हेलो हेलो हाय एवरीवन आर यू गाइस बैक
हेलो Hello, are you guys here? Otherwise, it will go till six thirty. Hello, Lalit. Hello. Hi, guys. You guys back? Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? No. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I can. I think you can start. So, any questions, any doubt, in this elastic load balancer section? No. <laughs> So let's move to the next topic that is order scaling. <clears throat> order scaling is a feature that is automatically scale the machines to a higher version, or you can have multiple EC2 machines. Like if you have four EC2 machines as of now in your system, and let's say tomorrow at 12 p.m. You are getting huge spike on your infrastructure. Your infrastructure was designed to handle the load up to one lakh request per second. But recently, due to a sale on your site or due to any reason, there's a very high spike on your infrastructure. Maybe two lakhs or three lakhs of requests you are getting. So in that case, when you are having a high infrastructure, definitely your servers cannot handle this load because your loads because your servers are just four. Who cannot handle that much capacity so in that case what happens your server goes down and your site is down completely how auto scaling preserve prevent these actions to from getting down and creating a new machine is it detects that your ec2 machine is running at high load maybe you have configured that 70 percent or 80 percent of utilization all your EC2 instances are running at 70% of utilization. Then it will trigger to a load balancer. Uh, sorry, it will trigger to a auto scaling. And auto scaling will trigger to create a new EC2 machine for you. So when you are having a four EC2 machine as of now, now with this future, you will have five fifth EC2 machine to handle all your requests, all your load. Let's say if this fifth machine is also not uh, sufficient enough to handle entire load then it will create another server for you from five to six 
to 7 to 8 9 10 you can define your minimum capacity you can define your maximum capacity and in this between niche your server will handle your auto scaling will shift from low lowest capacity to the highest capacity this is auto scaling that is scaling of your infrastructure scaling of your ec2 machine now remember anything that comes with the aws designing cloud designing an infrastructure on the cloud you should always grow horizontally you should always grow horizontally and that's why aws supports originally horizontal scaling of your ec2 machine you can only scale the ec2 machine to the number of ec2 instances when you have four ec2 machines now you can have five six seven and number of machines but you cannot scale the existing machine to a higher version from t2 micro to t2 nano to t2 large to t2 twice large you cannot upgrade the existing system to a higher version which you can of course but that is a manual process you cannot do with the auto scaling but still it is not recommended to go vertically you should always grow horizontally aws auto scaling manages your uh, monitors your application and automatically adjusts capacity to maintain steady predictable performance at the lowest possible cost now to understand this let's just assume you have an on-premise infrastructure all right and for this on-premise infrastructure you have four servers running you have an on-prem infrastructure with four machines running to meet your requirement all right now let's say it's called a game day on aws what a game day says on monday tuesday you have a very low traffic on monday tuesday let's say on monday tuesday saturday sunday you have very low traffic and on wednesday thursday and friday you have a very huge traffic now to meet this huge traffic you have four servers up and running to meet the requirement and for the rest of these four days you have very average utilization all right less than half of utilization you have on your system so in that case what will happen as you have already purchased an on-premise server for you which is already configured and running in your data centers it's going to charge you first of all you are wasting your electricity you are wasting your internet uh, bandwidth you are wasting the resources that you have created which is consumed on monday tuesday th and saturday sunday because the utilization is less than the half of the utilization required but on wednesday thursday and friday just for the three days you have configured a system to meet the four servers of requirement so you need to make sure that four servers are always running 24 by 7 every time so in this part on monday tuesday and saturday and sunday you are just wasting your your resources so when we talk about the business point when we talk about the business how you are uh, uh, you know investing how much you are getting in back your profit becomes very less so on this order scaling what you can do is based on your average utilization you can configure your servers so on monday tuesday and saturday sunday if you have only uh, half of the utilization of your server let's say only two servers that is completely utilized so in the auto scaling mode you can configure only two servers and you can let amazon to create two more servers whenever it wants so on monday tuesday and saturday sunday you don't require any creation of new server the two server let's assume the two server is capable enough to meet all the requirement let's consider on wednesday this slightly highly high uh, you know traffic on your system which is not sufficient to handle the two servers so this order scaling will automatically create one more server for you and now you have total three servers and as soon as your server capacity goes down that is the number of requests that you are getting on your server gets down that is a decrease in the size of your traffic it will automatically remove the newly created machine for you let's say on thursday and friday 
you have very huge capacity you have very huge traffic and you will require two more servers so it will create two more servers total you have four servers now on tuesday and wednesday tuesday and friday thursday and friday you have four servers running to meet all your requirement and as soon as the during the evening time or night time the traffic goes down again it will delete the truly new created servers and will come back with original position that is two servers so in this way on monday tuesday and saturday sunday you have saved two servers running for 24 by 7 which is very huge saving four servers saving two servers for the four days which is very huge you can save a lot of cost here you can save a lot of money here all right did you get this example how auto scanning will help you to uh, to manage your infrastructure to save your cost here hello am i audible yes sir all right so certain benefits of auto scanning that is it quickly scales as soon as it detects that the resources are under utilization or it is required that much of capacity, it will automatically scale. It maintains the performance. That is, it before your servers goes down that it doesn't support any more requests, it will automatically create a new servers and it will maintain the performance of your of your uh, application from raising the server from two capacity to three to four capacity. It has a better scaling decision. That is, there are a lot of scaling policies available. You can choose one of the scaling policy, like based on the application. If you are getting more application requests on your server, then you can decide on if you get number of requests on this server, it should increase the size of the limit. If the utilization of my EC2 insert reaches 70%, it should create a new server for me. If you are dealing with a network based uh, any application, that has a very high input and output of uh, bandwidth at the time you can configure. so there are various kinds of scaling policies available on which you can do this order scaling and it's one of the most cost optimized solution as we already have just seen the example so the next point is the auto scaling components now to create an auto scaling group you there is a three groups available there are three components available the first is the group a group defines that where you want to scale the infrastructure. Now, if you remember our previous architecture, we have a three layer architecture that is a front end, there is a back end, and there is a database side. Correct? So, on which side do you want to auto scale or do you want to scale your EC2 machines? If you have a high traffic on the front end, then you should increase the size of your EC2 instance on the front end only. If you have a uh, huge traffic on the backend server, then you can create a group of backend servers and increase the size of the servers there. Similarly, here you create a number of groups and each group defines a logical unit of EC2 machine where you exactly want to increase the size of your limit. Second, launch configuration. Before uh, EC2 machine is get created, you need to configure this launch config. A launch config will contain all the description about your EC2 machine. What should be the EMI, what should be the volume size, what should be the key pair, security group, instance type, everything you will configure here. Just like the way that you create an EC2 machine, here you will configure your launch config. And next time whenever the EC2 machine will come up automatically, it will have all the information that you have set there. So we need to first configure launch config. And then we decide our scaling plan when to increase the size of our ec2 machine that is scaling policy so these are the three important components of designing an infrastructure with highly scalability and ability design let's consider this is a group order scaling group and in which uh, you have kept your minimum capacity that is when the ec2 instances are under 20 percent of utilization 30 percent of utilization it should decrease the size to the one instance. This is your desired capacity that always you will require in your infrastructure minimum two EC2 machine. That is your desired capacity. Every time I must have two EC2 machine to handle my load. 
and if all the two ec2 machine is having under utilization that is less than let's consider 20 20 percent of utilization or 30 percent of utilization then it should decrease the size of one ec2 instance and there will be only one ec2 machine running in my system and then i define the maximum size that in case if it requires more capacity to scale then how long the scaling should be done how much i can afford to next three ec2 machine to next four ec2 machine five ten hundred whatever the size of the capacity so this three ec2 machine becomes your scale out capacity whenever you require the third instance will be created when if required the fourth instance will be created if required the fifth instance will be created that becomes your maximum capacity so minimum is when it is under utilization desired is every time it will be in your system maximum is the total number of uh, ec2 machine that you can afford or that you want to scale that becomes your scale out capacity anything to, questions any doubt in this part scaling all right uh, mm -hmm. i have no infrastructure running in my system uh, zero machine zero everything is zero i have nothing to do so if it's go to the launch configuration here in the auto scaling part just uh, at the bottom click on the launch configuration first and now the way that you create an ec2 machine you need to do the same you click on first create launch config and it will browse you all the way that you create an ec2 machine if you want to go with the uh, you know aws different emis you can go with that if you have any custom AMIs available with you, you can select one of them. That is also possible. I can do this. Go. What type of instance drive I want? Maybe you may have an EC2 machine running in your system with T2 Micro. All right. And for the auto scaling purpose, you might require an uh, you know uh, instance drive with higher capacity. Maybe T2 large, T2 twice large. Then you can go with this option. And then it asks us to define the configuration details as far as demo config, just a like name. If you want to associate any role to this EC2 machine newly created, you can enable that option. In the advanced setting, you can provide a bash script. Let's just write a bash script here. Bash yum install httpd hyphen y service httpd start php config httpd on and then write a file this is slash html slash index dot html correct perfect now again you have option do you want to assign a public IP to your EC2 machine or not? If you want, then you can assign. If you do not want, then you can keep it, uh, you know, uh, untouched. That is, do not assign a public IP to any instances. You can configure this part. Add storage. What is the number of GBs of storage you require? You can select that. You can configure it. Security go. Whatever the security code that you want to get associated. Let's attach the same security code. 80 port. 2984 review and launch config. Select a key pair for this newly created EC2 machine and click on create launch config. Now, once the launch config is created, the next part is to create a auto scaling group. So, here it gives you the entire option that using this launch config, the one that you have just created, using the same launch config, do you want to create an auto scaling group? If you want to go with that, you can just click on yes. We define a group name. It's called demo group. Now, what is your minimum capacity? Start with one instance, start with two instances, whatever it is. This is your desired capacity, actually. Just your desired capacity. How much instances you want every time. Now, from here, you can select the already zone. That is the summit in which you want to create a machine so in our load balancer section we have seen there are different kinds of submit so in which particular submit you want to create a machine 
let's go with us is one and us is one b whatever it is you can define it here now this part is very important just imagine a thing here we are getting a response whenever a user hit to abcd.com this endpoint is getting hit right and this endpoint will target to five servers as of now now let's assume there's a very high spike on this load balancer there is a high spike on the all the ec2 machine correct and it requires more servers so instead of this four servers five server now it has created two more servers all right it has created two more servers so we need to make sure that these two servers also belong to the same load balancer we need to add these two servers to the load balancer correct otherwise the two three four load balancer will be automatically created but still the load will be delivered to only five servers correct guys we need to make sure these two servers is also a part of this load balancer so here there is an advanced setting there is option of load balancing you want to receive a traffic from one or more load balancer you must select yes and here it only gives the option for the classic load balancer you don't have any option for the applications of the network load balancer so if you have a classic load balancer when you click here you get a list of all the load balancer but in case if you are using the application load balancer or network load balancer which is the advanced layer of load balancer at that time you can choose the target group whatever that every load balancer will have a target group so in that case you can select the target group which is associated with your application load balancer the network load balancer and then click on next now here comes your scaling policy how you want to scale your part scale between one ec2 machine to the maximum up to four let's say that is your minimum and maximum capacity you have defined when to scale the size of your group let's see when the average cpu utilization reaches to 70 percent here then it should create a new server for me so here in that way you can define this part when a server utilization reaches to 70 percent it will automatically create a new server for me but what about if the size of the uh, you know instances is very low but the utilization is very low it must should also delete the servers too so here you click on step function the step function is provided with increase group size and decrease group size when to increase the size of your group when to decrease the size of your group so to increase the size of your group here you need to create an alarm so click on add a new alarm and here you need to create a topic uh, basically create a new topic give a name uh, let's say in increase capacity uh, you can represent your email id or the links here now when to increase the size of a load balancer uh, sorry when to increase the size of your capacity when the average cpu utilization reaches greater than or equal to 70 percent correct and you can give your a name then what to do for at least one consecutive period of five minutes you can set the alarm create an alarm and here you can say add one ec2 instance when the cpu utilization oh i think this is wrong 70 percent is less than should be this one When, when the CPU utilization is greater than, when the utilization is greater than 70%, right? So at that time, you should increase the size of your capacity. Similarly, for the decrease size, you can set an alarm. At this time, you can set to the 30%. If a utilization goes less than 30%, then it will decrease the size of the capacity. And here you can set remove one instance at a time when the CPU reaches to less than or equal to 
all right this is increase in size this is a decrease in size then you configure the notification if you want like this sns configuration is required the one that you have just created which will throw your notification when uh, automatically new machine was got automatically created into the launch when it is got automatically terminated if it is fails to launch the server or it fails to you know terminate the server then in that case it will send a notification basically this notification is based on the sns sns is one of the aws services so we haven't seen that part so we'll remove this thing and we'll see in detail what is sns particularly then we configure the tags here let's say auto mode so that we can identify which instance belongs to auto mode and not review review everything and click on create auto scaling group now before i click on auto scaling group now you guys tell me how many ec2 instances will it automatically create when i click on create auto scaling group so how many instances it will automatically create only one why because uh, once it reaches maximum 20%, 20%, then it will go. of that one instance reaches to uh, more than 70%, the other three will be created. Exactly. The group size is only set to the one that is my desired capacity. Every time I must have only one server. So let's check it out. Create auto scaling. Okay, and if you click on activity history, then here you can see launching a new EC2 instance. So it started the launching of new EC2 instance. If I go back to the my instances, you can see here the auto mode P2 micro in the US East 1P. And it is automatically got created. So whatever the uh, parameter that you have set, whatever the key pair that you have set, it will have all the information. Now we have created one, uh, you know, batch script that install the Apache server and to write a file. This is in auto scaling mode. Correct? Yes, yes. Uh, yes, we have created that part, right? That to write a script uh, on our EC2 con launch configuration to create a bash script and write a file in my index.html page. This is auto scaling. Now, what will happen if I delete this machine? Hello, can you hear me? This what will happen if I delete this machine? Data will get deleted because we didn't mount. Okay, data will be deleted, of course. The instances will also get terminated. And then what will happen? Then what will happen? I think we can't delete. We cannot delete it. Yeah, first we have to remove the auto scaling, then only we can delete something. No, no, I can delete this. I can show you, I can delete this easy to instance. Okay. What will happen? All the four instances will get deleted. All the? Four. Three, three, four. Four, three. 
no i have only one this is already deleted this is my previous server for my load balancer this is the one that i have just created auto mode which is automatically created in auto scaling mode so if i delete this one these two are already terminated if i delete this one what will happen then and I can delete the server. I have full permission. Because I extend the batch No, who picks up the skeleton? No, no, it's not the deleting the CC instance and not the group. Does it create one more instance? Why it will create one more instance? Because you have set the uh, rule like that, right? In the group, minimum instance is one. Already you have created uh, the batch script for the same, you know, does it automatically invoke? Exactly. So we have a desired capacity of our group is one EC2 machine. So it will make sure that one EC2 machine is always running in your system. So if I try to delete the server, it will create another EC2 machine for us. Automatically, we don't need to configure anything. It will make sure that your group has one EC2 server running always. All right. So this is auto scaling. Now it will continually create a few more servers for us. It will continually create a server for me. So once you are done with the lab session, make sure you delete this launch configuration and everything so that otherwise uh, you will forget to do and your servers will be up and running every time. First of all, you need to delete the auto scaling group. Action, delete. And then you can delete the launch configuration. Now, this launch configuration can include any kind. You can have your custom AMIs if you have a dependencies, a lot of dependencies. Let's say you are running a Python application. So you might have a lot of dependencies for your system. You may need to install a lot of libraries and other dependencies. So you can create a bunch of all the things and you can create a custom AMI and then you can use this AMI in your launch configuration. And if you have a small configuration, then you can pass in your bash script. Anything you can do. So this is sort of scaling, load balancing. Then we have seen this uh, elastic IPs, volume snapshots, AMIs, different kinds of instances let me one question uh, from the team uh, you know can we add the existing ec2 to the uh, you know, auto scaling group of course we have that option like uh, i don't have any running instance as of now but if you click on action instance tree, uh, and here you will find an option attached to an auto scaling group this auto scaling, you can move it to your auto scaling group that the one you have created. Okay. Uh, do you anyone have AWS uh, any EC2 instance running? Yeah, one is running. Uh, yeah. Uh, can you share me your screen? Whose account? I need to just show you though how you can vertically scale your machines. So to whom I make a presenter, I just need to show one thing. Hello. One second. Yeah, what are the names you look at the uh, sessions there uh, in the middle? Do you see any ID with Ravi Prakash? Sorry. Uh, Hello. Prakash. Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, what is the ID? Uh, they are only uh, Ashok, Pradeep, Prakash, and Ravi Prakash. Four I four. Prakash, you can share it to the Prakash. Okay. You use uh, Okay, you have access now.
Yes, you have access now. You can show your screen. All right, so this is the EC2 instance running. Now what happens when AWS says that you should only create an infrastructure and you should, uh, you know, scale your infrastructure horizontally. The reason another is when you are scaling your infrastructure vertically, then you need to stop that EC2 instance and then you will be able to increase the size of that capacity. Now when we have a production infrastructure, at that time we cannot stop our servers. This becomes very problematic if you are stopping your production servers. So that's why you should grow horizontally. I will show you in case if you are having a test version, if you are having a test environment, if you want to check the capacity, how much is it in this, uh, of that particular instance family can hold your request. Now you can click on actions. First of all, you need to stop the server. Hi Prakash, can you stop the server once? Okay, so once the server is stopped, now you can click on action and in the instance setting. You will find the second, uh, the fourth option change instance type. Currently the option is disabled. So you need to wait until the EC2 machine gets completely stopped. Change instance type and from T2 micro now you can change the size of your machine. You can go to the T2 large, device large, twice large, whatever you want. Can you just click on the instance type? Yeah, and here you'll find again the list of entire uh, you know instance type. You can select any of this and click on apply. So that instance type will be applicable you can just remove it and restart your server if you want thanks all right so let me know if you have any other questions any other doubts it looks good now like yeah, so do you want me to continue to our next topic that is Route 53 or we should save some another day? Uh, yeah, probably we can take it the next week because uh, I believe today we have thought a lot. Let the team you know, go through the steps and you know, probably come. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, but uh, you know, you should try it a lot. The more you do lab sessions, it will be very helpful to you. Yeah, uh, uh, Lalit, uh, like actually I was talking to Shubham to include uh, the uh, one of the you know business case, you know, just we wanted to try it here. Uh, so uh, I'm going to you know, send you an email on the same. Uh, we want to cover up on the last day, like you know, maybe a couple of hours before, you know, if you can give just you know, some sort of uh, the configuration and how to achieve that, that will be much easier for us to you know, work on one of our, uh, the project as well. Okay. Sure, you can send me. I will have a look on it. Yeah. Uh, uh, in, in, like, have you worked on uh, the media streaming earlier to the AWS uh, cloud? Media streaming, uh, uh, yeah, the mobile streaming. There are a lot of media services available. Like, uh, are you talking about these media services, right? Uh, no, th this is very new to us. You know, we know what is the business requirement, but you know, we need some sort of another you know, expertise from your side. To give us some you know, highlights on that how to achieve that. Uh, sorry, I didn't get you. What exactly you are asking? So basically, you you keep an uh, uh, example like you know I have a, a laptop connected to the USB camera, 
and video is getting streamed onto my laptop, I want to stream the same data, uh, data to uh, cloud. You have a computer or which uh, which is connected to the camera, which is recording something. Uh, you need to record the same thing on the cloud. Yes, two, two things are there here. One thing I'm going to uh, record the video locally, store it, and I want to push that uh, video file back to the cloud. One is that. The second one, how do I live stream the same data back to the cloud? Two things, you know, we want to see that, you know, uh, which is the best way to achieve that, you know, what are the, you know, the services, we, you know, uh, which comes out of uh, AWS, which okay. can be used uh, for this kind of thing. Sure not, uh, uh, whatever the medium that we are using currently, go to meeting. This go to meeting, record the sessions, whatever mm -hmm. is recording, like now, when you, whatever the discussion, yeah. whatever the initiation we are doing, it records the video on the cloud and then it saves the files, whatever the video file will be generated, it will save the file to S3. Mm -hmm. So they are a CPU server running behind it to capture all the screen, whatever the talk, uh, whatever the conversation we are having and the screen sharing we are doing, it records everything and then it stores the data, the MP4 file to the S3 bucket. So in this way you can configure. But you will require a client tool to you know capture the data. If you are having a local machine on which the camera is set, you need to record this video and then you need to push it to S3 or EC2 machine, whatever it is. So you will yeah. require a client tool for that. Okay, just we want to you know, understand the some of uh, the, the mechanism involved into that. Like do we require you know encrypt and decrypt the you know, files when we send it over the uh, internet or you know, but does you know the service itself is takes care of such things? Uh, what are the different ways to achieve that? So probably like you know, I'll formulate my another you know, questionnaire on that. So but so that you know, we can just you know do some sort of a research on that and give us some you know the information on the same that will be much helpful for us. Sure, sure, of course. Yeah. Fine then. Anyway, I think as of now you know we're good with uh, things you know. Uh, uh, what has been covered? The thanks. Yeah. So either way, like you know, ask just Shivam to you know send the recorded session uh, by tomorrow, na, tomorrow morning, so that I can. Yeah, sure. Talk. I will just convey the message. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. It was yeah. nice having a meeting with you. I hope you liked it. <laughs> Everything was uh, very smoothly gone. Yeah. Fine, uh, Lalit. Th thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for your time. So we'll again get in touch with next week. All right. Sure. Yeah. See you next. Thanks. Week. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.